Hi, I'm Jeff Schwartz, Chief Medical Officer for ECI. An efficient and well-run emergency department leads to greater productivity, improved patient satisfaction, and faster patient throughput times, all while creating a more enjoyable and less stressful work environment. Similarly, an efficient emergency physician can be very productive and still have time to deliver quality, patient-centered care that is personally rewarding. What are the qualities of a STAR emergency physician? There are three that are easy to define. Number one, someone who delivers outstanding care to every patient. Number two, a physician that is friendly, smiling, and always polite. And finally, number three, a physician who is fast and efficient in his or her ability to process and care for patients. So let's review some specific things that can improve personal efficiency in our emergency departments. Be decisive. This takes time to develop, but decisiveness greatly improves one's efficiency. Stay focused. Get rid of distractions. There should not be newspapers, magazines, and or computer games present in the emergency department. You will be better able to stay focused if there is not clutter in your work area. Never waste free time. Do not put off things that can be done now. It also helps to anticipate the need for things such as prescriptions and discharge instructions so that they can be completed at times of quiet rather than times of chaos. Anticipate telephone calls. There is no need to wait for all the data to return before making a telephone call. Call the on-call resident or hospitalist early on in the care of the patient if it is clear the patient will need to be admitted. Follow this up later with a call to the attending or primary physician when more decision-making information is available. If working alone, there is no need to take charts in a strict order. Sometimes it is easier to see a lower acuity patient first and then move on to more time-consuming workups. Learn to delegate. Protocols can help improve efficiency. Having well-developed protocols for such things as wound repair or asthma nebulizer treatments can help improve throughput time. Only order tests and x-rays that are needed to determine patient disposition. Do not order a test if it will not change the outcome of what you are doing. Always explain to the patient what you are doing and why. In addition, explain what you are doing to your nurses, techs, and other emergency staff. Sometimes, a simple explanation will obviate the need for a very time-consuming test or x-ray. Order everything at once. Avoid the sequential workup. No one goes to McDonald's and orders their burger, fries, and Coke one item at a time. Order what you need and order it all at one time. Keep patients flowing. Finish old patient encounters before starting a new one. Do not take on a new stable patient when labs, x-rays, and disposition are waiting for you on a patient already in the emergency department. Work on dispositions first, rather than starting with a new patient. Admits. If it is an obvious admission, admit immediately. Do not wait for every test result to return. If you know what type of bed you need to get a patient admitted into the hospital, get the process started as soon as possible. Periodically, review what's pending. In the emergency department, 10% of what you order most likely will be missed. Remember the big picture. No one cares more about patient flow in the emergency department than you. Your job includes all jobs. Do whatever you can to maintain patient flow in the emergency department. This might mean bringing a patient back to a room or helping with the aftercare instruction and discharge process. Focus on acute problems only. Emergency medicine physicians are not internists. Refer to others if the problem is not acute and an emergency workup is not required. Different speeds. Remember, you must be able to work at different speeds and hit high gear if the emergency department is busy. We can all be efficient and these traits will be noticed and appreciated by your colleagues, nurses, and patients. Incorporating these best practices will help our partnerships and you achieve continued success.